I very recently discovered a passion for golf. There's nothing better than hearing the loud crack of your driver hitting the ball and looking up to see your ball way off in the distance straight down the fairway. Golf does not always go this well, but I found that I still love to play golf even when I'm digging around in the thick brush way off from the fairway looking for my ball. I love being out in nature when playing golf. I've seen deer, and so many other unique animals just for my experiences out on the course. I love being surrounded by lush green fairways and perfectly manicured greens. I came to realize that oftentimes the greens and fairways looked almost too perfect and unnatural. I had no idea how the golf course greens and fairways stay so perfect and the impact they have on the environment. What I learned may surprise you. There are several environmental issues created by golf courses. Pesticides, herbicides, and insecticides are all used to maintain the fairways. These chemicals, such as acephate and boric acid, are used to prevent pests and weeds, but they pose threats to the health of humans. According to the Environmental Protection Agency's Toxic Fairways Study, golf course superintendents are subject to higher mortality rates from specific cancers due to the chemicals. Residents who live along a golf course could be affected by pesticide drift, especially children whose bodies are still developing. This study discovered that golf courses use about 50,000 pounds of pesticides in one year, which is about four to seven times more than the average amount of pesticides used in agriculture. Another issue is water consumption. A typical golf course is about 115 acres. It takes a lot of water to keep that much land green. The average golf course in the U.S. uses about 312,000 gallons of water per day per course. To put that into perspective, that is about half the size of an Olympic swimming pool. That is a typical golf course, but in places like Palm Springs, where there are as many as 57 golf courses across the desert, courses can use up to a million gallons of water per day. This is enough water to support an average American family of four for almost seven years. This is particularly concerning because we have as many as 11 states across the U.S. experiencing extreme drought conditions. Finally, to build a golf course, numerous acres of land has to be cleared of natural vegetation and habitat. Non-native grasses, trees, and shrubs are planted on the golf course. As natural habitats are destroyed, native plants and animals may be driven out. Unfortunately, this was the case with the construction of the golf course for the 2016 Summer Olympics in Rio, Brazil. The golf course was built within the Mara Pendi Environmental Protection Area, which was a coastal habitat for sandbank native vegetation and animal life, including endangered species. The area was home to 238 registered species. Building a golf course here had a harmful environmental impact, as natural vegetation was driven out, and the salt marsh ecosystem that many species relied on was destroyed. Golf balls themselves have an environmental impact. As golf balls break down, some release a core of up to 300 yards of rubber. Each golf ball is equivalent to the mass of seven plastic grocery bags or three plastic water bottles. Golf balls are particularly harmful to marine life. In 2019, Reuters reported that there are about two to five million golf balls littering the seafloor borders of Pebble Beach Golf Course. This is alarming to think about when in comparison, there are only about 300,000 sea lions in all of California. As golf balls break down in the ocean, the rubber floats to the surface and mixes with the kelp, while the plastic covering disintegrates into shards of plastic which are eaten by marine life. This is how microplastics can get into the food chain. Golf ball companies also add chemicals such as zinc oxide and benzoyl peroxide to the core of a golf ball for durability and flexibility. All are toxic to marine life. Each of these issues takes a toll on the environment. Thankfully, there are innovative and creative solutions to these problems. In response to the issues that golf balls have on the environment, golf ball companies have begun manufacturing biodegradable golf balls. Biodegradable golf balls break down in the natural environment and contain zero plastics or harmful compounds. Some golf balls are designed for use in the water and dissolve minutes after being submerged in the ocean. Others are good for the environment because they contain ingredients that feed wildlife and keep the 
environment free of toxic chemicals. One golf ball dissolves in under 48 hours releasing food for fish. There is no true way to recycle a golf ball that is not biodegradable. However, some companies are putting golf balls back in use by cleaning and reselling them. There are also solutions for pesticides. Some courses are instituting good practices that involve using compost as an alternative to chemical fertilizer. Courses are also using organic turf management products, including corn gluten and fish emulsion. There are also beneficial insects, such as honeybees, that prevent against golf course pests, such as mole crickets. The University of Florida discovered that wildflowers actually attract beneficial insects that will attack common golf course pests. Many courses are using technology to reduce the amount of water that they use. Some irrigation systems are based on evapotranspiration, which allows the golf course to gain a sense of when moisture comes in and out. They can use this information to see how much water is needed. Courses are also investing in using recycled water for irrigation. For example, Sharon Heights Golf and Country Club very recently installed a recycled water system that carries wastewater from houses in Menlo Park, California to the golf course. Although the project was costly at $22.5 million, it has the ability to produce about a half million gallons of water per day. The course had previously used about 14% of the Menlo Park Municipal Water System. They are hoping that this system will grow in popularity in the future. This, in the end, will be more efficient and save the course money. Finally, although golf courses can have a negative impact on local vegetation and wildlife, modern courses are improving their design to better support the environment. Golf courses can provide needed wildlife sanctuaries. More than 70% of most golf courses are non-play areas with natural grasses, trees, and shrubs that attract wildlife. Turf areas provide a good growing environment for microorganisms that cleanse water by digesting pollutants. Landscape reduces all overall temperature and improves air quality by absorbing the grow growing amount of carbon within the atmosphere. 2,000 square feet of landscape produces enough oxygen for one person for one year. So you might be asking yourself if these solutions are real. There are over 15,000 golf courses across the US, and a number of them do have some good environmental practices. One of the best examples is Crystal Springs Golf Course in Burlingame, California. Crystal Springs Golf Course is among the top five most environmentally friendly golf courses in the US, according to Forbes magazine. From my own experiences of playing this course, I've been amazed by the beauty of the Crystal Springs Reservoir and the abundance of wildlife. The course works hard to protect both of these. Since the course is located on a 32,000 acre wildlife refuge, the course works to keep much of the natural vegetation so as not to destroy the natural habitats of animals. Because the course is situated above the Crystal Springs Reservoir that contains about 14 billion gallons of drinking water for Bay Area residents, it is vital that the water is not contaminated. The course's irrigation system works to prevent pollutants, while the course does not use fungicides, herbicides, insecticides, or, chem or fertilizers so that chemicals do not contaminate the reservoir water. The result is a beautiful golf course that is environmentally friendly. Not all golf courses are as progressive as Crystal Springs. However, you have a choice when choosing where to play. What you can do is choose a course that implements sustainable practices, such as using recycled water, or a course that has a written set of maintenance standards to see how often the course waters and how maintenance takes care of their lawns and wetlands. It is also good if the golf course has environmental plans such as goals for reduced water conservation and animal habitat restoration. Finally, it is also good if the golf course has numerous natural landscapes, such as vegetated buffers around water features, because landscapes filter water and provide habitats for animals. Golf courses that are striving to be more environmentally friendly are not completely rare. In the Bay Area alone, in addition to Crystal Springs, courses such as Moffett, Deep Cliff, and Shoreline Golf have all taken steps to irrigate with recycled water. Despite all of these environmental concerns, golf should not go extinct. If we all do our part to make more sustainable choices, the future of golf will be more environmentally friendly. 
The missing piece is about finding sustainable solutions and choosing to play at courses that implement sustainable practices so that we can preserve the game of golf for generations to come. Environmental issues can and will be fixed so that people can play the game they love without hurting the environment. If you found this information helpful and would like to learn more, please follow me on Twitter. I hope to see you out on one of the environmentally conscious golf courses soon. Thank you, and I hope you hit your biodegradable golf balls long and straight.